Entrepreneur on Fire, episode 183. Ah, uh, Mr. Burns, there's a uh, fire nation to see you, sir. Fire nation, eh? Prepare to ignite. Welcome to EntrepreneurOnFire.com, where remarkable entrepreneurs share their inspiring story. Let their journey illuminate your path to success. And now, your host, John Dumas. Fire Nation, let's thank our sponsors for allowing us to keep Entrepreneur on Fire daily and for free. LegalZoom is an incredible resource for all entrepreneurs. Protect your business and support Entrepreneur on Fire by going to LegalZoom.com, finding the right services for you, and entering FIRE in the referral box at checkout. Ting is better than your phone company, and they actually care about what they do. Ting equals no contract and no BS. Go to fire.ting.com for a $25 service credit. That's fire.ting.com. Okay, Fire Nation, let's get started. I am simply thrilled to introduce my guest today, Ian Schoen. Ian, are you prepared to ignite? I'm ready, buddy. All right. Ian, together with Dan, started the Lifestyle Business Podcast in late 2009 as an outlet to share their experiences with other entrepreneurs. In 2007, they began building a product development and e-commerce business that currently employs 16 people worldwide and does seven figures in annual sales. I've given Fire Nation a little overview, Ian, but why don't you take a minute, tell us about you personally, we want to get to know you, and then take another minute and give us an overview of your business. Thanks, Sean. Yeah, it sounds uh, much more impressive when you say it versus when I say it, so <laughs> I appreciate that. It's like, wow. Um, first of all, John, I want to congratulate you, man. You're really crushing it with uh, Entrepreneur on Fire. Thank I think you, uh, you're like one of the only guys that's doing it or the only guy that's doing a daily podcast for this stuff, and uh, there needs to be more content out there. So really, man, I, I applaud you on getting this stuff out there. You're crushing it. Oh, thanks, bud. So um, yeah, so that's uh, you know me and you know um, my business partner, Dan. Uh, we do the Lifestyle Business Podcast. Uh, that's a weekly uh, business podcast show. I started my career as an entrepreneur about six years ago. So uh, with Dan, uh, we founded a product development company. So we do design and manufacturing, uh, some in China, some in the United States. Um, and then we import products and sell them here online. And uh, so through that, and through that experience, we started the Lifestyle Business Podcast. And so now I spend a bunch of my time uh, running that product development company and uh, jumping back and forth to Southeast Asia to hang out with uh, Dan and all my buddies over there and uh, work on the Lifestyle Business Podcast and a couple other projects that we've got going on. Well, let me first thank you, Ian, for just being one of those people back in 2009 to just produce this great content in the form of a podcast, the Lifestyle Business Podcast, because you're one of the first podcasts that I started listening to when I was back in that corporate slave ways job, commuting to work, hitting the gym, just wanting to get out of that corporate mentality and hear some refreshing content so I'd have my earbuds in at the gym or you guys pumping through the car speakers as I was driving in rush hour traffic on the way to work and so inspiring on so many levels and encouraged my initial entrepreneurial leap and really is one of the major reasons why I just knew that there were other people out there like myself who just could use great motivational, inspirational content and Entrepreneur on Fire was born from that. So Awesome. Thank you. Well, it's funny, man. It's like uh, entrepreneurship isn't like a zero-sum game, you know? So there's like plenty of room for everybody to be an entrepreneur, which is cool. And so, um, you know, it's it's really, I attribute like a lot of our success to us just starting to talk about our business. Um, Like back in the day, you just didn't have those kind of opportunities. You know, you just couldn't flip on the microphone and start talking about your business and have other people interact and help you with your business. Um, You were kind of existing in this bubble and you were building this business in a bubble. Um, And so that's not that's not the case these days now. Um, and so we kind of opened the floodgates back in 2009. And ever since, you know, we've just been getting emails daily of people wanting to help us with our business, us helping them with their businesses. It's just been, it's just been a phenomenal experience. So thanks for listening, John. Well, my pleasure. And thanks for creating that great community, Dynamite Circle. I've had many of them on my show because they're just inspiring entrepreneurs in their own right, brought together by the Lifestyle Business Podcast. So We're going to delve way more into everything that you and Dan do, Ian, on every single level. But before we do, we love starting Entrepreneur on Fire off 
with a success quote, get that motivational ball rolling, get people pumped up for this content. So take it away. Yeah, John, this was probably the hardest question on your list for me because <laughs> I'm not a big quote guy, but uh, this quote resonated with me and it's from George Burns. Uh, and he said, I look to the future because that's where I'm going to spend the rest of my life. Um, and so I think, you know, the way that this applies to me is uh, I, I really think that you owe yourself at least 15 minutes a week, and I take a lot more than 15 to think about the trajectory of your life um, and actually do something about it. And I, I think sometimes uh, being an entrepreneur kind of boils down to this is like you have to be selfish in the ways in which you want to see the world work, and then you have to be selfless in the ways in which you get there. Uh, and I think that that takes a fair amount of planning. Could not agree more. That's going to resonate incredibly well with Fire Nation. And Ian, take it down to the ground level. How have you actually applied this mentality to your everyday life? I spend a fair amount of time like projecting out and thinking about the future of our business and thinking about the future of my days and how I want to spend my time. So it's a, you kind of got to be like an architect with, with your life, I think. And, and if you've got to do things today that are going to set you up to succeed, you know, a few years down the road or a few days down the road, things like that. So it's not, it's not just about doing today what needs to be done today. It's about doing today what's going to set you up for the future. Well, we're going to talk about your favorite book later. But right now, you just really prompted to my mind one of my favorite books called the Compound Effect by Darren Hardy. And he talks about how that compound effect of just doing little things, positive things, planting those seeds, just has this amazing add-on effect as you just progress in your career, in your journey as an entrepreneur. And he gives some great examples throughout that book of how if you're projecting to the future and you're doing things now, planting those seeds to grow, you're going to be amazed and blown away with what you have at that time in the future. So that's just a great mentality, Ian. And it's a solid transition into the next topic, which is failure. And that's looking the other way back in our journey, because as entrepreneurs, we've all failed on certain levels and we fail every single day. But as long as we're failing forward and not allowing this failure to define us as entrepreneurs, it's a positive thing. So share with Fire Nation a time that you failed, Ian, or you just faced this major obstacle that you had to dig deep to overcome. And how'd you overcome that? Yeah, I've been up for uh, three hours, John. So I'd say I've, I've failed probably at least three or four times <laughs> since, I've, since I've been up. That's pretty much the daily routine. But uh, yeah, yeah, I think, uh, you know, I talked about this. Um, we had our, uh, our, our Dynamite Circle meetup in Bangkok, and I, I did a talk, and it was about um, four milestones in our business. And, and we've been in business for five, almost six years now. And, and so what I did was I tried to go back and I tried to look and say, like, what were the major milestones that happened in our business um, over those five years? And I could really only think of four or five of those um, major milestones. And uh, I think that that's, that's just kind of how it goes is, you know, like you said, you do these little things that, that build up and then boom, major milestone. And so it's really important to work towards those ma major milestones. And yeah, sometimes they can be failures, sometimes not. But um, I, I think some of the biggest challenges that I've had to um, to overcome are, are, are mainly mindset challenges. I mean, I think it's uh, one of the biggest challenges that entre entrepreneurs can go up to are, are, are mental challenges. So I think staying positive. Uh, surrounding yourself with awesome people, uh, specifically surrounding yourself with people that are maybe a little bit further down the path than you are is really important. So getting yourself in a place in your life uh, where you can have like very little drama so you can focus on your business because uh, it's really important. So, uh, you know, I think you have enough to worry about. Um, so compounding that with uh, relationship problems, keeping up with the Joneses, Prius payments, whatever, just increases your chances of failure. So don't do that to yourself. So if you're going to start a, a business, if you're going to get into entrepreneurship, um, do it with as little baggage as possible. Um, and that's been one of my biggest challenges is like designing my life so I can be successful in business because it takes a lot of work. Um, most people think that uh, you just have to make good products, but if you mentally aren't in a good position to serve your customers, treat your employees well, um, spend time and money where it's needed. Uh, dealing with those issues, uh, it's going to be a lot harder. I love this message, Ian. And that's why I love when I get emails from young entrepreneurs, like 18, 20, 24 years old. And if they can just really get it through their heads, the importance of not just burdening themselves with this incredible amount of responsibility and financial debt at an early stage in life, they're really just freeing themselves up to do what their passions are and what really resonates and is, and is authentic with themselves. So that rings Absolutely. true. Yeah, I'll give, I'll give you a real world um, 
a real world problem that that came up, and this was obviously a, a big milestone in our business too. So it, it was a it was a big problem, but it was also a big milestone in our business. So one of our first products that we uh, designed and, and manufactured, it was like this big rolling cabinet. It was like a metal rolling cabinet on wheels. Yeah. Um, and I'm not going to get too technical here, but. Uh, I spent like a long time designing and developing this product, and uh, we had shipped in a container, and the container cost like thirty grand. Um, and so, long story short, when the container came in, the product was almost unusable. I mean, it was um, there were some problems with the manufacturer, and they had sent it over, and it wasn't great. Um, but there was also problems in what I had designed, so I didn't do the best job designing it. But I was faced with this problem. I had this container and it was worth $30,000 and it, we had invested all this money in it and it was our first container ever and the product was a disaster. And, uh, you know, I, I just sat there and I was so scared and I just thought, what are we going to do? This isn't this isn't like an ebook, right? I can't just shelf this and, and come out <laughs> with another ebook, right? We spent $30,000 on this. So we had to send out the product. Um, and, and a bunch of interesting things happened when we sent out that product. So, uh, we were solving some problems in that market that that were that were existing, and then some some that were new. So a lot of customers didn't really care that the wheels were falling off because they didn't roll this product around. Um, now some of the customers really did care that the wheels were falling off, and um, you know we lost them as customers for the next five years. But um, luckily for us, we ha- we had a fix in place, and we started rolling out the fixes and. Um, you know, all, all to say that if we didn't ship that first product, we wouldn't have gone under version two and then five, and then we wouldn't have built a product catalog around that one product. And then I think in 2011, we did over a million dollars in business in that, in that category. So, you know, we took a disaster product or what I deemed as a disaster and turned it into a success. And I think the moral of the story here is that you've always got to ship, man. And you've got to ship because you've got to figure out what people are going to say. Um, so if it was left up to me, I would have never shipped that product. But I, I left it up to the market. I shipped the product. I made some people angry, but I also made a lot of people happy. Um, and in the long term, I think I think we really won on that because it's a, it's a business that's been thriving since 2007. Another incredible insight for entrepreneurs, Ian, because just like the Eric Reese Lean Startup model of getting that minimally viable product out to the market, you know it's not going to be perfect, it's not going to be good, and this especially applies in software where you can just do patches and upgrades and what have you, less so in physical products, but as you've proven, it definitely works in physical products as well. Because until you actually get that product out to the market, you really aren't going to be getting the kind of feedback that's necessary to make it exactly what the market wants. You can make assumptions all day long about what you think the market wants and what the market needs. And that was just an incredibly interesting point you brought up that you know one of the major features was the fact that this was a rolling cabinet, but there was a decent segment of the population that didn't even want or need that rolling feature. So it was not a big deal for them. And that's critical information that you got because you ship. So Right. I mean I think, you know, a lot of these products that we have, John, like, you know, our iPhones and things like that. The last iPhone that came out, the maps were a disaster, right? Disaster. Of course Apple knew that the maps were a disaster, but they weren't gonna de- they weren't gonna delay that uh, that revenue or that product launch, you know. And so I think we we kind of um, we kind of look at some of these products we have and we just think, uh, yeah, you just kind of accept these flaws and you don't realize when you're building your own products that your own products are going to have flaws in them too. So true. So Ian, let's go to the other end of the spectrum. I mean, you shared a failure, a challenge that you had, and also through that you had some aha moments for sure. And that's the other beautiful part of being an entrepreneur. Even though we're failing every day, we're getting through those failures with these aha moments. So take us back to a time when you just had this massive light bulb that went off, when the clouds parted, the sun just shined through, and you said, wow, this is going to resonate not only with my authentic self, but with my target market. And how'd you turn that moment into success? Dan and I have this this test, and we call it it's like uh, it's called the corner office test. So you take yourself um, at your current job or your current position with your company, or wherever you really are in life, and you picture the entrepreneur, the person that you aspire to be, um, and and you look at their life, and you look at uh, maybe their vacations, the people they surround themselves with, uh, maybe their bank accounts, just everything that kind of surrounds them, and you think in part, is that somebody that I want to be? Uh, and for me, I conducted I conducted this test at my uh, first and actual last corporate job, and I, I bolted for the door. So I think that was uh, <laughs> that was one of my first aha moments in the last uh, ten years. And there's there's been a couple other ones, but I think that was a really important aha kind of pivot moment for me. 
what were some steps you took directly following that aha moment? Like, take us down to the ground level because there are listeners right now who are like, man, I feel like Ian feels and I'm still at my corporate job, but I walk out that door and I don't know what's behind it. Leading up to it, there were a couple of things too, John. So I think, um, you know, sitting, sitting in traffic uh, every day driving up the California coast. So I, you know, I was in uh, San Diego driving up north to North County. Uh, and wow. that's, yeah, that's a, that's a two-hour commute every every uh, day. And, and you didn't have Entrepreneur on Fire to listen to. I didn't have Entrepreneur on Fire. <laughs> no. I was like, I wish John would come out with the podcast. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I was listening to some other podcasts back in the day. But yeah, you know that adds up to ten hours a day. And then wow. You know, but w- what I couldn't what I couldn't figure out when I first moved to San Diego and when I first started my corporate job is I would look around and I would see all these other twenty-something year olds and they would all be driving new cars and they'd all be putting down payments on condos. And I just thought, like, this is this is really interesting to me. Like, I don't understand how people are affording to do this. But then I started to realize, and this is going back to what we talked about uh, a few minutes ago, that everybody around me was living with consumer debt, and nobody really owned their own time. And so I, I, I just thought, wow, this is kind of uh, this is kind of disturbing, especially the part where you don't own your own time. And uh, so that kind of led up to my aha moment. Um, and then after the aha moment, I, I think I just, I just started, it just all started to get into perspective for me. Um, you know, around that time, uh, Dan had uh, started to move over to Southeast Asia. And then we started to see what was really possible on the internet and how it was really possible to make money and, and be marketers and whatnot on the internet. And it just, it just kind of clicked and it just said, Hey man, we could be making a thousand dollars a month living in Southeast Asia and not have to deal with any of this. And so that's essentially what happened. Powerful, Ian. And on that note, have you had an I've made it moment? Yeah, I, I definitely think that there's like milestones that I've reached that I'm that I'm happy about. Um, so wearing flip flops every day—that's a, a major milestone in my life that I appreciate. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, I finished first in a motorcycle race last year. That that was uh, that was a, a lifelong dream of mine. <laughs> Congrats. So, uh, yeah, um, I, I, but I think you know related to business. Um, one of the big I've made up moments I think last year was sitting in Bangkok when we had our Dynamite Circle meetup. And uh, we had, uh, you know, 80 people in this room and, and we had a bunch of speakers and it was a three-day event at the uh, Aloft Hotel. And I just thought, this is really cool. Um, we're, we're doing something special here. We brought a bunch of different entrepreneurs together from a bunch of different fields and everybody's getting along and talking and sharing tips and tricks. And, and I think that that's, that's, that's a, that was a real I made it moment. So Ian, talk to Fire Nation for a couple minutes here about the journey. What are your thoughts on the entrepreneurial journey and how do you look at your journey personally? That's a good question. I think a lot of my journey, it's, it's interesting, man, because a lot of my journey probably in the beginning was kind of spun from defiance. You know, so it was like, oh, I don't want to wake up to somebody else's alarm clock. I don't want to, I don't want to march to somebody else's, uh, somebody else's drum. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't want to do what other people are telling me to, what to do. I want to kind of do my own thing. Um, and then when you start doing your own thing, it's interesting because then there's none of those people telling you what you should be doing anymore. And then you're forced to deal with the decisions that you made. Yeah. And you kind of have to make your own decisions about how your life is going to move forward. And then it gets tricky because then you're not just blocking and tackling. You're not just defying people. You're, you're actually having to forge a way forward on your own. And so I think that that's kind of the next step to the entrepreneurial trip. Um, and we've been it for six years or so now. And so I think that that's, uh, those, are, those are some of the challenges ahead are, are identifying the new kinds of work to be done, identifying your day, identifying the people around you and, and how your business works. So Ian, you have a ton of exciting things going on right now with the Lifestyle Business Podcast, with everything in general that's going on with you and Dan. Share with us one thing that's just really exciting you about your business right now. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that's uh, that's that's going on. I, I think I'll share with you a, a few things if that's okay. That is <laughs> awesome. Um, first of all, like you said, I love doing a podcast with Dan every week. Um, a lot of the people that I've looked up to in my life have been, um, you know, radio personalities. Now that we're able to podcast, me, you, and Dan, uh, it's relatively easy and it's cheap to produce. I'm I'm really happy to be a part of that. Um, the second thing that I'm really happy to be a part about uh, a part of is the the Dynamite Circle which uh, we've, we've already talked about, but it's our private membership forum. And I'm so humbled to be around so many high quality entrepreneurs. And I've, I've just learned so much about so many different types of businesses. Um, and so that, that gets me out of bed for sure. And then the third thing that I'm really excited about 
um, on a daily basis is is our team. And I think, uh, you know, I'm just so lucky to uh, have all these people around me that I'm working with that are that are super smart and that are super dedicated to growing our business and that understand our vision um, and, and can help us get there. So, I, you know, I think, John, one of the things that um, that really used to frustrate frustrate me when I was younger, like 10 years ago, I used to have all these ideas about the ways that I wanted products to be um, or the way that I saw the world and, 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 and the way that I wanted things to be. But the problem was I didn't have a platform to execute those ideas on. So I would just sit there and struggle. You know, I didn't have any money. I didn't have any people working with me. Um, I didn't have any manufacturers. I didn't have any of this stuff. And and so once I started to develop and define that platform, now it's like very much um, more easy to get ideas out in the world. So I'm, I'm really grateful to have the platform that we have right now. Love that, Ian. What's your vision for the future? Oh, geez. Uh, I, I just think that we keep swinging at it, man. <laughs> I think uh, it's, 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 it's just every day, man. You just keep keep coming up to, to the plate and just keep swinging at it. I think, you know, defining, um, one of the biggest, one of the biggest issues that I have lately is, is defining projects. It's kind of this thing that I was talking about, like looking into the future. Like I've got a, a, a lot of different projects or businesses that I would like to start, but they're not, they're not kind of big enough for me. If, if that might, that might sound kind of greedy. No, but no, it makes sense. Yeah, I, I think in the past, like I, I focused on, on, on kind of being a big fish in a small pond. And I think, that's a great way to uh, to get off the ground, but I think in the future, uh, for us, it's going to be important that we focus on uh, probably larger markets, and 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 we have to thrash around a little bit uh, more to get to get in there and, and play in that space. But I think it's good. Ian, one of my major beliefs, and I share this with Fire Nation all the time, is that all we have as entrepreneurs is time, and we really need to be dedicating our time, this very limited resource to exactly the different areas that we want to be focusing on. And if you want to go after that big prize, that's going to take a lot of focus and a lot of time. And you can't be chasing all the little bright, shiny objects that keep bobbing to the surface all over the place that as an entrepreneur in the game, you're always seeing. Exactly, John. It's so hard though, man. It's so hard. (laughs) It's so hard. (laughs) Okay, Fire Nation, we're going to quickly thank our sponsors who allow us to bring Entrepreneur on Fire to you seven days a week for free. Ting is a nationwide, no BS mobile service that just makes sense. It's truly and completely contract free with no termination fees and no bundling. They have service levels from extra small to extra, extra large for voice minutes, text messages, and megabytes of data. Fire Nation, stop subjecting yourself to overage charges and nonsense penalties. Ting even offers credits on unused service. Use less than you anticipated using and Ting will drop you down to the level you actually hit, crediting the difference on your next bill. Ting lets you add unlimited devices to a single plan. Pool minutes, messages, and data with your friends and family at a flat fee of $6 a month per device. Ting has incredible online account maintenance and no hold customer support. Visit fire.ting.com now to open your account and you can get $25 off your device or a $25 service credit using that URL. That's fire.ting.com. Are you waiting for the perfect time to start your dream business? That time is now. LegalZoom and Entrepreneur on Fire have partnered up to make sure you get started right. Whether you're setting up an LLC, S-Core, sole proprietorship, nonprofit, trademarks, or copyrights, LegalZoom takes care of you from start to finish. Their award-winning service was developed by the best legal minds in the country, and every business gets personalized attention. One stat that I love, Fire Nation, is 90% of LegalZoom customers would recommend LegalZoom to their family. There is a disclaimer here to note, though. LegalZoom is not a law firm, but they can connect you to an attorney and provide self-help services at your specific direction. Let's sum this up. If you're an entrepreneur and want to ensure you are protecting your business, call or visit LegalZoom.com and protect what's yours. Make sure to enter FIRE in the referral box at checkout for additional savings. All right, Ian, back to the program. We're about to enter the lightning round. And this is where I get to ask you a series of questions, and you come back at us, Fire Nation, with amazing and mind-blowing answers. Sound like a plan? 
Yeah, I feel like the lightning round is something where I have to talk fast. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> just, just short answers. No. Okay. <laughs> what was holding you back from becoming an entrepreneur? The main thing that was holding me back from uh, from being an entrepreneur, like like I was explaining earlier, was uh, was probably ego. So before I owned um, a business, I used to get frustrated about why the world didn't work the way I wanted to. And I started asking myself why I wasn't making the money I deserved, why I wasn't hanging out with the people that I thought I should be meeting. Um, the answer was always I wasn't giving enough. So before you get, I think you have to give. And you probably have to give more than you think is possible. So once I started giving, um, and it's important to give in the right direction, the direction that's going to get you the results that you want and, and the places you want to be, then you start to get back. So um, kind of like I imagine like the modern day hipster, right? Sitting in coffee shops, riding their fixies around. They have all these lofty ideas about the way they want the world to be. Uh, but they're not willing to spend their time to make it that way. So that was me 10 years ago, riding around on a fixie. We've all got to learn on our journey. So Ian, what's the best business advice you've ever received? Well, I've told this story a, a few times, but I, I think it's still relevant. So back when I was in college, uh, I was working at a shop that fabricated uh, race cars because I'm really into that kind of thing. And uh, the owner and I became uh, friends over time. And, and by the way, the way that I got this job, John, was I just started showing up to a shop every day. I mean, it's literally every day I would show up and just see if there was anything that I could do for him uh, because I was so interested in learning about what he was doing. And so, you know, I saw the cars out in the yard and I thought, oh, those are really cool cars. So one day I just came by there and I just kept pestering him until he gave me a job. So anyways, um, he gave me a job and then we started hanging out and we would have lunch together every day. And, and I, this was really important because I wanted to know what it was like to be this guy. And so I, I figured out ways to, to associate with him and, and become his friend. And, and so he gave me a piece of advice that was really important. He said, Ian, uh, you don't want to be working on these expensive race cars. You want to own them and enjoy them at the track. And that's something that that really click click with me is uh, he was stuck there working on these cars and and really what we both wanted to do was enjoy these cars and drive these cars and so I think you know to to reiterate that point it's like don't start a rock climbing business because you love to rock climb start a business that allows you to rock climb uh, whenever you want love that and we've recently had Robert Green on the show who's the author of Mastery and Forty Eight Laws of Power and. I read both of those books after the interview and they both are fascinating in their own way. But one thing that just really popped into my mind when you were talking about this best business advice is that there was this guy, and I forget his name, but he knew that he wanted to associate himself with Einstein. And he obviously had no connections with him. Einstein was considered incredibly successful at the time with what he was doing. So this guy just showed up at Einstein's shop and just said, give me a broom, sir. Let me just sweep. Let me just prove my value. And over time, he continued to prove incredible value until he became Einstein's first hand assistant. And that just kind of goes to show you that, you know, you really can choose your own destiny as to what path you want to go down to get to your end goal. You're 100% right, John. And I think uh, in our business, uh, Dan and I have been preaching about this for a while now. And, you know, we have kids knocking on the door all the time. And like, you know, Every once in a while, the right kid will knock on the door and he's saying the right things and everything lines up and boom, he's got a job with us. And so that just happened with Ben. Ben's editing our podcast now um, and he's starting a podcast editing service, which is really cool. Yes. And that's because you know he was knocking on our door saying, hey guys, I'll, I will do anything it takes um, to produce your podcast because that's a skill I want to learn and that's where I want to be. And what about fellow Mainer, Alyssa Doucette? Yeah. Yeah, Alyssa too. She's crushing it for us. So. Yeah, she's, she's wonderful. I had her on the show as one of my top 10 podcasts because I just love the fact that she was from Maine originally about 20 minutes down the road from me and her story was just really inspiring and she's been a big part of me connecting with the Dynamite Circle and with you and Dan as well. So I give it up for her. Awesome. So Ian, what's something that's working for you or your business right now? Uh, I think one of our our big initiatives lately is uh, SOP, so standard operating procedures, so scaling these SOPs. So I think I think this is a common thread among uh, successful uh, business uh, people and successful businesses too, is that they have processes in place. So when we first started our business out, we we really relied and, and we still do. Don't get me wrong on on hiring smart people and getting uh, as 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 much talent through the door as we could. But what what we started to realize was we really need a process because. 
you know, a process is great. It's even better when you have a bunch of smart people around, but a process is great because it takes the judgments at the lowest levels and puts them uh, where they need to be at the higher levels. So it's, it kind of creates these filters and it, and it creates kind of a, a roadmap for how your business uh, gets run. So I'd say uh, scaling and, and implementing uh, standard operating procedures has been really, really important to us in the last six months. No, I could not agree with you more. And when you said SOPs, you know, I just internally screamed out standard operating procedures because <laughs> you're talking to a military officer. I was in the army active duty for eight years, four years active, four years in the reserve. So that was one thing that was drilled into my head over and over again was to create operating procedures and make them standard. And we always use that SOPs, SOPs. We always use that term. And I applied that to Entrepreneur on Fire from day one. And people were always coming to me and saying, John, you're crazy. There's no way anybody can do an episode a day. You're going to get burnt out. You're going to be nutso. You're going to go bonkers. And I said, you know what? It's so much easier than you would even imagine. I do eight interviews every Monday. Yes, it's a long day, but I'm talking to incredible people like Ian, like Alyssa Doucette, like Seth Godin, like Chris Brogan. Is life really that bad when I'm talking to eight <laughs> of these people every single day for about 30 to 35 minutes? And I have the rest of the week to go surfing if I wanted to. Obviously, Entrepreneur on Fire is my passion, so I pour my heart and my soul into it the rest of the week. But with SOPs, you can do so much. Yeah, yeah. It's really, it's, it's, you guys have a leg up, you know, coming out of the military. And I think like a lot of people in technical uh, positions, they understand this too, like engineers. Um, it makes sense. It's, 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 uh, it's SOPs are for efficiency, and so they're they're really important. And it does, yes, John, allow you to go surfing. So that's that's pretty <laughs> sweet. <laughs> so, Ian, do you have an internet resource like an Evernote that you're just in love with that you can share with our listeners? Yeah, but I don't know if I have one that nobody's shared before. But uh, I'll share the one that I'm, I'm I'm currently using, and that's the Buffer app. Um, has anybody shared this yet? You know, once or twice, but I love when we even okay. get repeats because then it's like validation of the app for Fire Nation. So go ahead. Yeah. So I think the Buffer app has been really cool. So, uh, you know, as, as, as you guys might know, it's, it's something that uh, kind of saves your tweets and tweets them out when you want them to be tweeted out. So a lot of times I'll be reading something at four in the morning and it's not a great time to tweet out content um, to uh, my Twitter followers. So I'll put it in the Buffer app and I'll, I'll tweet it out then. And, you know, a lot of times like you read two things that, uh, you know, back to back and you think, well, you know, I can't tweet this out right away. I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be barraging my my uh, my audience with these tweets. So that's what the Buffer app is good for. Beautiful. Love it. And it goes back to that standard operating procedure. You can just have the in place, the procedures ready to go, and it's just an efficient use of your time. Absolutely. Ian, can you recommend one book for Fire Nation? Sure. Yeah, this was a book um, that I read a long time ago. I should actually probably go back and reread it. I really liked it at the time, but I read it about five years ago. It was uh, called Maverick by Ricardo Semler. Have you read this book, John? I've not. And it's been recommended one time on Entrepreneur on Fire. It's not an easy book to find. No, I, I don't know if it's still in print or what, but uh, I've got a copy here. I can send it to you Wow. if you'd like it. But um, take yeah, it's, 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 yeah I'll, I'll definitely send it over to you. Uh, so he's Ricardo Semler is a, a really cool guy uh, that I that I can gather from the book. And uh, he's got a manufacturing company in Brazil that he grew to be pretty large. I think he took it over from his father. But um, yeah, he did some really interesting things. I mean, he, he created democracy in the workplace. And I think it was, uh, I, th I think the, the book just hit me kind of at the right time. And it really taught me a lot about how to build my team and the way to treat people uh, as employees. So I, I highly recommend it for anybody that's running a team. Wonderful. Well, if we can find it, like I said, and I think I did last time, I'm pretty sure Amazon does have a copy that you can get in the Kindle format. I'm pretty sure. But it will be linked up in the show notes, entrepreneuronfire.com. So Ian, this next question is my favorite. It's kind of tricky. So take your time, digest it, then come back at us with an answer. Imagine you woke up tomorrow morning in a brand new world, identical to earth, but you knew no one. You still have all the experience and knowledge you currently have, your food and shelter is taken care of, but all you have is a laptop and $500. What would you do in the next seven days? Yeah, this is a tricky one. I, I think I can I think I can kind of get to the root of, of what you're asking here, John, is like, what should new entrepreneurs you do? You got it, buddy. 
Right. So uh, here's the thing, John. I think this is really important, and I think this is something that uh, a lot of new entrepreneurs and, and younger people aren't taking seriously, and that's skill sets. So uh, I have a broad range of skills, and when I look in, back in, in, in my history and my work history and things like that, I can pull out uh, specific skills that I've um, that I've earned for myself. So um, off the top of my head, I've got 15 years of Photoshop experience. I've got 10 years of solid modeling experience. Either one of those things I could go out and I could get a job with tomorrow or I could start a business around. And so I think this is like a really – this is really undervalued by a lot of people and that, and that skill set. So I think a lot of people just kind of show up and they say, hey, ready to be an entrepreneur. What's what's next? Well, what's next is playing on your past experiences and your past skill sets. So um, for me – you know, I, I would I would look at some of these skill sets that I built up, and I would figure out ways to build those into businesses. And essentially, that's what I did when I became an entrepreneur in the first place. You know, I, I looked at markets that I understood because I had been involved with them, and I took skills that I had built up over the built up over the years, and I had turned that into a business. So I think when you're ready to be an entrepreneur, um, you know, take seriously the skills that you've developed. And if you don't have any skills, please, please, please go out and get some skills. Be an apprentice. I think that that's something that's extremely underrated um, in, in America, at least still, is, you know, apprenticeships. Like, go go be somebody's apprentice for two years and then, and then start a business. Uh, I love that advice. And Ian, you've given us some great actionable advice this entire interview that's going to be of huge benefit to our listeners on their journey. Give Fire Nation one parting piece of guidance, then tell us how we can connect with you, and then we'll say goodbye. Sure, John. Uh, you can connect with me at Ian at the Lifestyle Business Podcast. Um, and and I think... Uh, you know, I think um, one of the things that I think about a lot is uh, entrepreneurs and risk tolerance. And so I don't think that entrepreneurs have a high risk tolerance. Uh, I feel like uh, entrepreneurs feel like they have everything to lose if they don't become an entrepreneur. And that's really the way that I felt um, when I started becoming an entrepreneur. I just I just felt like, hey, I can't work this job anymore. I have too much to lose. Like we have so much we have a limited amount of time and it's so important that we spend it the way that we want. So I, uh, I encourage everybody to go out there and spend your day how you want. And, and hopefully entrepreneurship is one of the ways that you can get there. Ian, thank you for being so generous with your time, your expertise, and your experience. Fire Nation salutes you and we'll catch you on the flip side. Booyah. Fire Nation. That hysterical impersonation was brought to us by Mike Cowles of EpicMarketer.com. He has a great podcast and a great website and seven incredibly hysterical impersonations coming up for us over the next coming weeks. So check him out and enjoy. Thank you for joining us at EntrepreneurOnFire.com, your daily dose of inspiration. Prepare to ignite.